Hey, I'm Perry, creator and writer of my manga, Cold Blooded. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, you name it, at Perry S underscore Hotter, Perry's Hotter. And you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to Rapid Fire. The concept of Rapid Fire is simple. 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes for the interview itself. And we get to talk with creative and talented people in the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? Is a very talented manga creator and comic writer and, and artist and an all-around amazing person in his own right creator of cold-blooded with an upcoming kickstarter campaign we're joined today by the ever talented perry edwards how are you doing today perry i'm doing good how are you doing good doing good for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person tell us who you are and what you are bringing to two geeks talking I'm Perry, your friendly neighborhood mangaka in the making, making an appearance on Two Geeks Talking, bringing uh, my manga Cold Blooded. It's about Rembrandt Snart, who misses his dad. But while holding out hope after his father's disappearance five years ago, he discovers latent reptilian abilities brought out by a shadowy figure determined to end his life. The, the concept of this, what was the initial idea that sparked your interest in this creation of this manga and how did it to the physical product we have today this story is a culmination of uh characters and plot lines i've had in my head since middle school you know inspired by the likes of naruto and primarily dragon ball z when i was growing up watching on tv and in middle school i drew these characters and had the scenarios in my head and now i'm bringing it to fruition and of course, I refer back to those drawings and what I had originally penned. So then how has your your concepts changed from middle school to your current age? Has it evolved in any way? It's become more fleshed out. And then uh, characters just uh, drawn better. When I look at my drawings now, it's, I didn't quite understand uh, muscles in the arms and legs. So they're just kind of, they weren't quite tubes like uh, the old Flesher cartoons, but they were kind of bulky, but they weren't necessarily reflective of actual muscles. Hey, muscles are hard to draw. I have to admit. I mean. <laughs> For, forearms and calves. I, I didn't understand those, but I understand them now, like how they're supposed to look. I, I happen to read, and thank you very much for letting me at least peruse the, the digital version of, of Cold Blooded as well, too. The one thing I noticed from your initial progress from, from page one to page 200 and something was that you started to implement shadows and shading and, and everything like that as well, too. You were really playing towards the end of the book with the the darker side of your black and white style which i thought was was pretty amazing in its own right was that a conscious decision or was it something you you learned in the years of, of putting this together i kind of want to say both probably mostly the latter like learning by chapter one I, I didn't really have a style chapter two i started to nail down my style effectively making some of the characters in the first chapter kind of off model. This is my first book. And so there is some experimentation, like chapters two and three. I tried doing gray tones with Copics and that wasn't like a good idea. That's why like uh, the gray tones are weird in there. Then I did gray tones in Photoshop. I got straight up traditional tones off of Amazon and stuck those on. I also have Clip Studio and I've done gray tones in there. Now I'm, I'm like do a whole lot traditionally save for some like speed lines and tones here or there and then of course lettering probably some exceptions where i may want to traditionally letter i think it's interesting that you said i was like leaning into black and white and that's probably a good thing because like since it's a manga primarily in black and white it should be drawn and designed that way most Amer conventional american comics aren't drawn for black and white they wouldn't work as well in black and white. They're designed for color. You know, that's good to know that, like, I'm going more towards that. that that's a good thing. Black and white is is more difficult to truly understand from an artistic perspective uh, because it, 
you really you really have to understand light and shadow you really have to understand light direction you really have to understand shadow direction as well too where is your light source pointing in, in every single panel because it's going to change in every single panel for the most part if it's an indoor scene then you might have a little more flexibility but from an outdoor perspective everything's constantly changing and especially when you add an action to it as well too like you have in in your manga definitely plays a huge uh perspective shift as well too especially if you're adding in powers and and that type of energy uh into say throwing a punch etc i like to do the manga thing where uh, there are necessarily shadows that is not like shadows and lighting that is not necessarily reflecting of the actual real time lighting but for effect like if a character is evil or a minute or someone's afraid menacing just like you know how someone holds a flashlight underneath yeah. them at a campfire you know you just do that you know it doesn't have to like be like the real world lighting all the time what is the most misunderstood aspect about creating a manga that maybe normal people don't understand about it manga doesn't have a a one size fits all style to it even though american comics have like a conventional comic book style the styles still vary from artist to artist and if you look at the most popular manga dragon ball one piece they all look very different from each other because the mangaka have developed their own styles if you were to go and say well yeah oh the dry anime just the character has really long legs a short torso and it's just like you just describe like maybe anime the manga in the 80s there are also fads and stuff that fall in and out of style you, you know there is no like a uh, technique method for how to draw it that you know there are some like conventions right there's still like a um, unique style to be found if you will what is the second wisest piece of advice that you've received that has stuck with you in your career uh, being a mangaka i think i heard it first when i took the comics comics launch course and learn how to launch a Kickstarter. And uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but I, Tyler James says in one of his videos, and sometimes he, I think he says in some of the ads that, like, you don't have to be the best. And, you know, after all, every successful person, comics or otherwise, didn't start out uh, as the best. So, like, why should we uh, expect to come out the gates as the best when that's something only earned after years of doing it? I just watched, like, a Gary V video, the motivational speaker yeah. recently, he's, he said something very similar to this and that's to be an enthusiast and not an expert. Basically what I'm doing, like I'm an enthusiast. I'm not uh, an expert or trying to be an expert. It's kind of annoying. People tell me like I should teach, like I should either teach art or teach comic books. And I'm like, for one, I've only been doing this for a few years and it's just like, no, no offense to teachers or something, but it's like, I could do one or the other, but I don't think I could do both. And I feel like to try and teach something, it's like I'd have to give up the other thing. That old adage, I know it's not entirely true. Those who, who can't do teach, and it's like, I'm going to do it, you know, but I'm not going to teach. You know, maybe 20 years down the line when I have like a whole library, like I can finally teach something, but not right now. But when it comes to the entertainment industry or comic creation or you know, an actor or actress or whatever. It just takes time and repetition is all it is. It just takes the ability to create and to still be passionate about what you're doing, no matter what everyone else says, but you're still doing it. That's the main thing. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? I guess, you know, it was being made fun of, you know, another old adage, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Ain't really true. Words hurt and kids can be quite cruel to each other. But that's just a result of the broken world we live in. So I, I don't re necessarily think people are inherently good. And that's like one of the messages or themes of my manga. How do you think the birth of creativity was formed? The birth of creativity? Well, if we look at animation history, they always start with uh, the cavemen uh, with the wall paintings and everything which to me is like the most boring part of animation history but it shows that people had uh, for one a couple things it was a way to record things 
Uh, and also it, it was a way to uh, tell a story, a storytelling. Um, and stories, of course, can be used to convey morals and messages. Probably like ever since like man has been around, that's the birth of creativity because we're different from every other living thing on this earth. And we have that, what started out as like entertainment and telling stories and, and recording things has just grown since then. When does the Kickstarter start? What's your goal and what are you looking to accomplish with the campaign itself? Okay, those are all great questions. None of which I have concrete answers to. <laughs> Other than that, uh, I'm aiming to finish volume two first and then... I need to work on my Kickstarter page a little bit because uh, all I did was copy and paste my last campaign so I could get the pre-launch link and I've been collecting follows because I want a good launch. And my goal was to launch this month in August. I don't know if that, if I'll really launch in August, if not August, then in September and I'll try to give like a week or so notice on social media and to my email list which I do have until then I'm going to be collecting. Um, I'm going to be collecting followers for my pre-launch page and letting them know the progress of volume two. And I'm, I'm working on the last chapter because most of volume two has been done. Uh, but I took a, I was working on, on relettering uh, volume one. And when I got done with that, then I resumed volume two and I have all 17 pages of the last chapter pencil. So the next step, is actually after this, I'm going to meet with an editor and then uh, then I'm going to start inking and uh, knock that out. Inking should go pretty quick. And um, as far as goal, my last goal was like, I reached nine something, it was less than a thousand. So I suspect this goal will at least be a thousand or more. You know, I haven't determined it exactly. How has an editor helped you in your creative process from? book one and book two here. So there's only my second time interacting with the editor. I think I'm going to stick with an editor from now on. I had it in my head for a long time that I didn't want an editor or I didn't need one because there was no one that I really trusted. I've come to realize that I may be shortchanging myself on that. Uh, someone told me that made me think this says, you may not necessarily need an editor, but no one, no one really successful or popular did it not have an editor and that got me thinking is like do i really want to screw myself i don't want to like go years down the road and find out uh um, maybe i should have had one all along since working with one because it was weird in volume two i like work with editor for one chapter uh, with chapter 12 i didn't work with him again i made chapter 13 on my own but now chapter 14 i'm working with another editor and i think i'm gonna stick with this guy it's not even that much feedback and it's like i'm at the helm anyway I don't necessarily have to do everything they say, but it's stuff like that's not a good page turn. So uh, here and there, uh, you can add a sound effect in this panel. It was just like three things for chapter 14. I'm like, that's not that bad, you know? Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? Oh, okay. So, well, I'm inspired by lots of mangaka, but as far as like person that comes to mind is Robert Kirkman. I love Walking Dead and Invincible. And Kirkman's status as a comic book creator is something I would hope to one day achieve myself, reach the kind of status that he has as a creator. Maybe multiple series and adaptions now, like a household name, like, you know, he's essentially made it. That's like what I would like to aspire to. Professionally, you are successful. Do you consider yourself personally successful? I'd have to say... No, I, I don't even know if I would even consider myself professionally successful either, but there's a lot of things I want to achieve that I haven't yet. And I can't, you know, I'm not happy with where I'm at in life. I thought I'd be further ahead and the timeline of how I thought things would happen in my head didn't quite match up. But because of this, I've had time to come to terms with some things. Uh, not too long ago, I was quite miserable, but right now I'm just like at an okay level. But I'm also just kind of feeling things out. You know, my first thing, I got to get through the second book and this Kickstarter. That's first on the agenda. 
then I can worry about all this other stuff. I'm getting back to uh, my own kind of normal. It's like when I went back and re-lettered my first volume, that was quite a big setback because I'm spending time on some I already created. And I, while I'm making it better, it took like a considerable amount of time, time that could have been spent making a volume two. And then also volume two, I also went back and re-lettered as well because most of it was also done at that point. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failure? It's only failure when you give up. And the name of the game is how long you can hold out. Uh, you only fail when you throw in a towel, which I don't plan on doing. I want to be the last artist standing. It's only then I will achieve success, never have given in to failure. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? So when I wrote this answer down, I'm actually th thinking about changing it. What I originally put is the same way that I have. I don't see how it would necessarily be any different. I would think it's a cyclical process. You know, people are afraid to do what they really want. So when they see others go for what they want, it inspires them to do to go for it as well. I don't really see it playing out any differently, but now that I come to think of it, you know, since you mentioned Mangaka, I guess that kind of is a key different because I feel like I'm seeing more and more like manga creators or people, uh, cr younger creators like me imitating manga. And I'm thinking, well, that may even contribute to more manga creators. If you could create a manga of your life what would its title be and because i like music what would its soundtrack be that's uh it's funny because i've i've sort of thought about this um i've seen this an the anime called bakuman which mm -hmm. is about like a manga creator but what there, there's some things i like about it, things i didn't like about it like for one, one of the characters' motivation is to uh, 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 be a manga creator, and it, it was to, like basically impress this girl, or, or you know, it, it was really corny, and I didn't think it was a good motivation. And then on top of that, there were certain things that weren't didn't touch on or, or weren't necessarily applicable applicable to me because it was about a Japanese mangaka, and so I was always thinking if 10, 20 years down the road when I become like a Robert Kirkman uh, uh, type of figure, I could make a manga that would be almost, would be like inspired by my journey as like a creator that could create like a sort of slice of life drama thing. Like this one manga, Hajime no Ippo, which is about boxing. You see this kid go from not boxing at all to boxing but then it touches on everything and other things in his life that has nothing to do with boxing i would want to create something like that i would want to call it uh you know i mentioned it earlier i'd want to call it last artist standing i thought i always think that i always thought that'd be a fitting title i don't know what the soundtrack would sound like even though i, I do think of music when i like think of stories in my head but i was thinking like a, an opening something to be like you know, wanting something really badly as far as what it would be like, a, like an anime opening or something. The traditional, like, fast-paced anime opening and closings that, that we all know and love, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Perry, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And, and where can we find you online and on social media? All right. You can search, find me at Perry S underscore Hotter, H-O-T-T-R. That's Perry's Hotter. Virtually anywhere on social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Tumblr, even Twitch, you name it. Just search me. You'll probably find me. I usually use the same profile picture, uh, which is a drawing of me, and it's my banner at Comic-Cons. I have an email list. If you find any of my accounts, make your way to my link tree, which will offer links to other things. And you can sign up for my email list as well to get updates on everything cold-blooded and manga-related. And then lastly, my most important is my Kickstarter. If you haven't already and this has piqued your interest at all, please give it a follow uh, 
sign in, uh, hit that uh, notify me on launch button on Kickstarter, and you'll be notified when it launches here in the next month or so. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. And if you like this interview and all the thousand others that I have put together over the past 15 years, you can support us through our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash tgtmedia. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on to Geeks Talking.